I want to welcome you to our online church service. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave us a like, a comment, share this video with others, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need prayer, contact us. If you would like to learn more about God's plan for your life, contact us. We're here to serve you. Also, every Saturday morning from 9.30 to 10.30, we're having outdoor church services for children, youth, and adults. We continue to serve the Lord even in the circumstances we are in. Church is not closed, only the buildings. Now let's continue to worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth. God bless you. I'm going to share with you from John chapter 3 for our Sabbath message. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to that passage, John chapter 3. Before we read God's Word, let's pause and have a short prayer. Father, we ask that you will guide us right now. As we share from your word, speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John 3, beginning with verse 1. 
It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. You know, let me tell you a little bit about who Nicodemus was. Uh, Once again, looking at verse 1, it says he was a ruler of the Jews. Um, We're told in the book, The Desire of Ages, a beautiful Christian book on the life and teachings of Christ, that... um, Nicodemus was highly educated. He possessed talents of no ordinary character. He was rich. He was learned. He was honored. We're also told in that book that he was a strict Pharisee. He prided himself on his good works. He was widely esteemed for his benevolence and liberality in sustaining the temple service. And he felt secure of the favor of God. You know, he was like Saul the Pharisee, who said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews in the book of Philippians, that he was circumcised on the eighth day, that he was um, concerning obedience to the law. He was a Pharisee. He was zealous. He persecuted the church. Nicodemus didn't persecute the church, but he was an upright man. He was highly esteemed in his culture, in his religion. He held a position of authority. He was part of the Sanhedrin council. It also says in that book, The Desire of Ages, on page 171, that because of his birth as an Israelite, Nicodemus regarded himself sure of a place in the kingdom of God. And listen to this, and I quote, he felt that he needed no change. That's why he saw Jesus by night. He was embarrassed to be seen with Jesus during the day. Because of his position, he didn't want to risk being seen with Jesus. That's why he sought Jesus by night to have a private interview with Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Notice the word teacher, a teacher come from God. Because no man can do these miracles that you are doing unless God is with him. Notice that Nicodemus did not refer to Jesus as the Messiah. He didn't refer to Jesus as the Son of God. He referred to Jesus as a teacher and as a miracle worker. He recognized Jesus just as that. Now, we're also told in the book Desire of Ages that something was happening in Nicodemus' heart, even before he met with Jesus that night. It says that he had heard Jesus before. It, and I quote on page 168, Since hearing Jesus, Nicodemus had anxiously studied the prophecies relating to the Messiah. And the more he searched the stronger was his conviction that this was the one who was to come. He was already, he had already heard Jesus before. He had already been studying the messianic prophets of the, uh, prophecies of the Old Testament, and he was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. That's why he went to speak with Jesus. Now, Jesus, notice how Jesus responded to what Nicodemus said going back to John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, notice, now Jesus is speaking directly to Nicodemus. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't say thank you. He didn't, you know, kind of say, hey, thank you for, you know, your admirations. Thank you for your, um, your, your comments. Your, um, thank you for uh, your, 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 um, your affirmations. You know, I am a great teacher. I am a great miracle worker. No, Jesus knew exactly what Nicodemus needed at that time. And Jesus knows what you and I need right now. You know, it's not by accident that we're listening to God's word right now. God has allowed this to happen because he loves you and he loves me. And he wants everybody to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. That's what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. He loves us with an everlasting love, according to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. In fact, in John 3, 16, is the, 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 one of the most popular verses in all of Christianity that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm sure you have heard that verse many times. And it's found in this chapter, in this conversation that Jesus had with this Jewish Pharisee priest by the name of Nicodemus. So Jesus um, cut through the take. He didn't waste any time. Solemnly yet kindly, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus' heart. And he said, unless a man, he said, most assuredly, I say to you. Jesus got personal with Nicodemus. And it's okay when Jesus gets personal with us because he loves us and he wants us to be saved. Revelation 3.20 says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open up the door, I will come into him and will fellowship with him and he with me. I am convinced that Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart and my heart right now. And he wants to come in. And so that's why Jesus said, I say to you, unless a man is born again, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wow, those are very blunt words, very solemn words. Unless a person is born again, they will not see the kingdom of heaven. They will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. They will not live forever with God. They will be lost unless a person is born again. That tells me that being born again is absolutely important. In fact, going back to this book that I mentioned, The Desire of Ages, on page 177, talking about this experience, talking about this interview that Nicodemus had with Jesus, the author says, the truths they're taught are as important today as they were as they were on that solemn night in the shadowy mountain. Did you hear that? What was taught to Nicodemus that night, many years ago, almost 2,000 years ago, is just as important today. That's why I'm sharing this message with you, my friend. You may have heard this before. You may have heard the term born again before. You may have heard sermons about this before. But maybe it's been a while, and I know I haven't preached about this for a while, and every now and then it's good that we remind ourselves on one of the most important teachings of Christianity and one of the most important teachings of the Bible that has to do with your salvation and with my salvation. I'm sure that you and many people are convinced that we're living in the last days. All you have to do is read Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and many other prophecies, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, and you will realize that we're living in the last days of this earth's history. 
But the most important question is, how can I be ready for the second coming of Jesus? Because the final events of Bible prophecy will culminate in the second coming of Jesus, the second coming of Christ. Not only does the Bible teach us where we're at in the history of this world, but the Bible plainly teaches how we can be ready for the second coming of Jesus. And to put it plainly, to put it bluntly, to be ready for the kingdom of God, we need to be born again. So what does it mean to be born again? Well, let's continue reading. Notice Nicodemus' response to Jesus' heart-to-heart message. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? You know, we're told in that book, The Desire of Ages, that his words were full of irony. I can imagine Nicodemus saying, "Ah, can a man... Can a, can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and come out again? You see, Nicodemus did not appreciate that Jesus was speaking to his heart. You know, Nicodemus probably wanted to discuss theology with Jesus. He wanted to enter into a discussion with Jesus. But Jesus shared with Nicodemus what he needed. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus' heart like he's speaking to your heart and he's speaking to my heart right now. You know, Nicodemus was an educated man. I'm sure he held a doctorate in theology. He was a he probably held a PhD if he was living in our day and age. He he was a seminary professor. He was on many important boards. You know, Nicodemus was not a dumb person. He was highly intelligent. Obviously, he is mocking Jesus' words. And we're told that Jesus didn't change the subject. He continued to share the same thing and to push this uh, message even closer to Nicodemus' heart. We're told that he raised his hand solemnly and kindly. He said in verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. That's what born again means. Whenever you read something in the Bible you don't understand, we simply need to compare that verse with other verses in the Bible that will give us the interpretation. What does it mean to be born again? It means to be born of the water and born of the Spirit. Well, what does it mean to be born of water? You know, Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Acts 2, 38 says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus himself was baptized, not because he had committed any sin, but he did it to fulfill all righteousness. That's what he told the man who baptized him, John the Baptist. John the Baptist says, why are you coming to me? I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus said, it's okay. Baptize me so that we will fulfill all righteousness. You know, being baptized according to how the Bible says we should be baptized is absolutely important. But it isn't the only prerequisite to be saved. We also need to be born of the Spirit. What does it mean to be born of the Spirit? It means to receive a new heart. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. 
I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Being born of the spirit means to receive a new heart, to allow God to spiritually take out the heart of stone that we have and to give us a heart of flesh. We're told that uh, what Jesus told to Nicodemus is the following. Uh, Desire of Ages, page 171, it says, He said to Nicodemus, It is not theoretical knowledge you need so much as spiritual regeneration. You need not have your curiosity satisfied, but to have a new heart. You must receive a new life from above before you can appreciate heavenly things. Until this change takes place, making all things new, it will result in no saving good for you to discuss with me my authority or my mission. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. You don't need theoretical knowledge. You need a new heart. You need to be born again. Why do we need a new heart? Because Jesus said in Matthew 15, verse 19, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. That's what is inside a a heart of stone. That is what is inside a heart that has not been changed by God. That is what is in a heart that has not been converted or should I say an unconverted heart? You know, there's a beautiful song that says, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for our world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. My friends, I hope you're realizing that you and I, we need to be born again. It doesn't matter how much church we've had or how often we've gone to church. Maybe we were born into church, raised in church, and that's fine. That's good. Going to church is great. The Bible promotes that. But that does not automatically guarantee us a place in the kingdom of heaven. We may give a lot of money to the church and praise the Lord for that. And I appreciate offerings and and receiving offerings uh, for our church and for our ministries, but that doesn't automatically guarantee us a place in the kingdom of heaven. We must be born again. Jesus says, you must be born again. You must be born of water and the spirit. This is part one of this message. I will share next week, part two, the rest of the story of this interview that Jesus had, that Nicodemus had with Jesus. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus' heart And he's speaking to your heart right now. He's saying, you must be born again. You must be born of water and the spirit. This isn't something you can do for yourself. This is something that only you can allow God to do in you. He's the only one who can do the heavenly heart transplant in us and take away our our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. I invite you to open up your heart right now. Ask God to give you a new heart. Tell the Lord you want to be born again. Tell the Lord you want to be born of water and of the Spirit. If you want us to pray with you, contact us. If you still have questions, that's okay. Contact us. Tune in to our next week's message as I share the rest of this story. God bless you and have a happy Sabbath.